Good afternoon. I'm Angie, and you're listening to the Voice of the Spartan, broadcasting from Cheshire, Connecticut. Today is March 15, 2016, and we're going to talk about the mysterious Bermuda Triangle, where over 150 ships and airplanes have disappeared since 1800s. The Bermuda Triangle is an 18,000-foot deep area located in the Atlantic Ocean, bounded by Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. When was the Bermuda Triangle discovered, you may ask? Unfortunately, it is unknown, but it was first mentioned in 1964 by Vincent Gaddis in a magazine called Argosy. Argosy was a magazine in the 1960s that had mysterious stories about skeptical topics like Bigfoot, the Bermuda Triangle, and UFOs. The first and the most famous disappearance in the Bermuda Triangle was Flight 19 on December 5, 1945, in which five U.S. Navy warplanes vanished. They took off from the Fort Lauderdale Naval Air Station in Florida for a training routine. They were supposed to be back in about three hours, but they never returned. Since then, other disappearances, such as the USS Cyclops, which was a huge carrier ship that supplied fuel to the American fleet during World War I, and Flight 441, a U.S. military carrier aircraft, which had disappeared with 42 passengers on board, has continued the controversy over the Bermuda Triangle. So what has caused these disappearances? Some of the realistic explanations for the Bermuda Triangle disappearances include topography, weather, and vein gas hydrates. Other more skeptical explanations range from the people believing aliens are the ones to blame for the disappearances to theories based around Atlantis and magnetics. Now that we have some background on the Bermuda Triangle, I'd like to introduce you to Benjamin Radford, a skeptic who has done research on things such as the Bermuda Triangle, Bigfoot, and UFOs. He also wrote many books that are based on his research. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. you want to get started with the questions? Sure. Okay, so first off, I was wondering, what got you interested in the Bermuda Triangle? Well, the Bermuda Triangle, um, you know, it's one of those classic mysteries. I mean, it's uh, it's been around for for many decades. Uh, you know, when I was when I was a kid growing up in the in the eighties um, and early in late seventies, you know, I'd heard about it, and so it was just one of those classic ones that uh, seemed to be around for for years and years and years. Um, it was strange because it seemed that at the time nobody had actually solved it. It was just sort of, you know, out there and there were TV shows about it and movies about it. And the thing that really got me interested in it was the fact that the Bermuda Triangle mystery essentially seemed to be um, a static case. That is, there were no you know, there have mystery, that is, there's something in the popular idea of the Bermuda Triangle that's not true. So for how long have you studied the Bermuda Triangle? Uh, I've been researching the Bermuda Triangle for about uh, 15 years now. Um, the, uh, the, the main person that did the research, basically the, the best person to, uh, to do the research on the Triangle is a friend of mine uh, named Larry Kush. And he wrote a book called The Bermuda Triangle Mystery Solved in the, in the late 70s. And he's, he's like the, he is the main person. I mean, other people such as myself have also done research on it. But his work is really the, the, the example uh, that, you know, researchers and scholars use to, to talk about the triangle. Have you ever traveled in the area of the Bermuda Triangle? I have, and I survived. I'm still here. Uh, most recently, uh, I was through there about five or six years ago on a uh, on a cruise. There's nothing unusual about that. I mean, the Rio Triangle or that area is uh, it's one of the most heavily traveled areas in the world. Uh, so you know, you've got cruise ships, you've got you got shipping containers, you got airplanes. So, have you ever experienced any technical difficulties? Technical difficulties. No, no, no. Uh, you, you know, in fact, it was uh, some friends and I were, were sort of joking about it because they're like, "Ooh, are you scared to go through the triangle?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "No, let's <laughs> let's do this, right? Bring it on! Come at yeah. me, man!" You know, it was, um, you know, it was the, the, everything was perfectly normal. And again, I mean, the, there's so many ships and planes and boats going through that area all the time, you know, every day that if there was something actually going on there, we should be seeing reports about it every few days or every few weeks. And instead, you know, it hasn't essentially been a mystery uh, for, for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So how would you explain the disappearances that have occurred? 
Well, um, you know, part of the, you know, in order to understand the disappearances, uh, you have to go back and you look, look at the, the specific cases. So, for example, that's one thing that Larry Cush did, did very well, is that uh, the, the, the origin of the Bermuda Triangle really began in the 1940s. Uh, where people were talking about there were these mysteries and they would list all these different planes and ships and everything that went down. And what Cush did is he went back and he, he made a list and he said, okay, well, what, what actually happened to these, these cases? And in some cases, uh, the, the plane, um, you know, in some cases didn't crash anywhere near the train. Basically, I mean, you know, the, the, the answer is that when you start looking at the ships and planes, uh, you know, you can't just sort of take a body of them and say, look, here's all these cases. You have to look at them individually. And what you find, and what Larry Cush found, was that when you actually start looking into them, there, the, a lot of the reports of these so-called mysteries weren't actually mysterious at all. So, for example, uh, there were cases where there would be a ship that was, that, you know, that disappeared, uh, according to the, the official Bermuda Triangle story, uh, it disappeared, say, in 1956 in calm weather, and no one knows what happened to it. But in fact, if you go back and you look at that ship, it wasn't calm weather at all. It was the middle of a storm, <laughs> and there was no, there was no mystery as to what happened to it. And so, it, in many ways, the the story of the Bermuda Triangle is it's basically uh, it's it's journalists um, not correcting the record, and it's people who are trying to make a mystery where there isn't one there. Uh, so that's the again. There's there's you know in in Cush's book. I mean, he does an excellent job of going one case by case by case by case, and saying here's the uh, here's the official story, the official mystery. But then when you look at it, it's not mysterious at all. It went down during a storm, or it went down. Uh, you know, in some cases they exploded because they were carrying um, a, a combustible cargo. Mm -hmm. So and, and again, in, what he found was that in some cases. Uh, there would be there would be a ship or a plane that was said to have gone down in the triangle, but then when he went back and looked at the records, it's like, well, hold on, this is this went down in in the North Atlantic by England. So this is this is not even close, and yet it was originally you know considered to be part of the mystery. Okay, so I read that some explanations for the disappearances include topography, environment, magnetics, and even aliens. Do you tend to believe in one of these explanations or something else? Well, yeah, I mean, there's certainly lots of explanations. I mean, people said that maybe there's, there's what are called rogue waves, that is giant tidal waves that suddenly come up out of nowhere. Other people said, uh, some people thought that um, the Atlantis um, is, you know, the, the fabled city that Plato wrote about. It's, it's underneath the water of the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Jamaica. Uh, Atlantis is, of course, a fictional city. It didn't exist and it's mm -hmm. never existed. Uh, so there, there's all these, you know, again, what happened was that people, people who, were, who were under the mistaken impression that there was this high rate of disappearances, they tried to think of, like, how could, why, you know, what, what are the possible ways? So you're talking magnetic anomalies, you know, some people thought that there were like time portals to other mm -hmm. dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. So but the, the problem is that when you go back and you actually look at the disappearances, uh, they're not mysterious. You know, you don't need to talk about aliens when this, when a ship goes down in the middle of a storm. You don't need to talk about, you know, geomagnetic anomalies and, you know, giant bubbles that come up from, from the water and sea monsters and all these other things. When, when you know, in many cases, there's there's no mystery because the the ships and planes didn't mysteriously vanish. Mm -hmm. um, so that's essentially, I mean, th that's essentially the the, the answer. Um, so you know, again, it's not a matter of like which of these explanations is correct. Uh, you know, there there's not one explanation for why everything goes down. Sometimes it's uh, sabotage. Sometimes it's uh, you know, it goes down in bad weather. Sometimes you just you just don't know. I mean, there's no. Same, I mean, look at for example at the the Malaysian Airlines flight, right? Yes. Yes. To this day, that's been what three years now, and mm -hmm. to this day here in 2016, we still don't know exactly where the plane is. That doesn't mean it's mysterious. It doesn't mean it's paranormal. It doesn't mean it's supernatural. It just means that they don't know where the plane is. Exactly. Um, so finally, in your opinion, why do people in general tend to get wrapped up in unexplainable things like the Bermuda Triangle? 
Well, the, the short answer is that people love a mystery, right? Everybody, everybody loves to think about, you know, aliens watching over us or mysterious parts of the ocean where things disappear or whatever else. People, people love mysteries and people love to be scared and, and titillated and sensationalized. Uh, and, you know, you, you have the, the popularity of the X-Files and movies and TV. People love a good story. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I love a good story. <laughs> we, we all love a good story. But, you know, the, the fact is that when you start thinking about it logically, you realize that, again, the Bermuda Triangle essentially doesn't exist as, as is popularly, popularly thought of. People go through that area, you know, tens of thousands of people go through that area every week on cruise ships, on boats, planes. Nothing ever happens. And so, you know, when you start looking at it logically, it's like, well, hold on here. If this is real, then how come nobody in recent memory has disappeared there? You would think that, you would think that again, it would be on CNN, it'd be on nightly news. You know, another ship went down. Instead, when you start looking at it, you know, the last so-called mysterious ship probably disappeared in the, in the early 70s. Uh, so the question is, well, what's going on here? Is this, is this not a real thing? Or was the real thing that somehow, for some reason, stopped being mysterious 40 years ago? I mean, you know, it, you, people think that in this day and age, you know, you got GPS, you got all this technology, that that means that everything is tracked all the time. And the fact is that's just not true. Um, and you know, mistakes still happen. You know, things still disappear. But it, it's not. It's that doesn't mean it's paranormal. Doesn't mean it's alien. Doesn't mean it's some sort of weird time portal. It just means that <laughs> the plane went down, and uh, you know, the 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 search area for that missing plane is huge. And and keep in mind that there's ocean currents that are moving the debris all over the ocean floor. So even if you, you know, even if they found, even if today they found exactly where the plane went down, the plane's not there anymore. It's, it's, it's drifted off, so they have to follow the current. So it's, you know, people need to remember how big the world is and how deep the ocean is. And when you think about that, you realize that, uh, you know, it's, it's not quite as easy as people would, would like to think in terms of, you know, finding uh, missing planes and, and ships. Yep. That. Thank you. Thank you okay. for everything. Sure, good luck with that. Okay. You too, bye-bye. According to Mr. Radford's opinion, the Bermuda Triangle is a mystery that people made up to entertain themselves. He proves his point by saying that it is one of the popular areas in the Atlantic Ocean for cruises and cargo ships, and there haven't been reports about disappearances in 30 years. Everyone loves a mystery, and the Bermuda Triangle is an entertaining made-up story that is believed in and loved by so many people. Even though it is a made-up story, it will be passed on from our generation to the next. Because who doesn't love a good story? This is Angie. Thank you for listening. Check out some of our other podcasts at our The Voice of the Spartan website.